Yo, what's up everyone, Kevin here. In this video, I wanna share with you my top 10 hikes I've done snowboarding. I've had the chance to travel all around the world doing lots of hikes at different resorts, and these are my top 10 favorite. A quick safety note, all these hikes go into the back country, so if you're tempted to try any of these hikes, make sure that you've done an avalanche course and that you're taking all the necessary precautions and have all the safety gear with you. Starting off with my number 10 hike, which is in Mount Hood, Oregon, USA. Uh, this hike starts from the top of the Palmer chair. One of the unique things about Mount Hood is that many times through the summer, you're actually above the clouds. Once you get your hike over with and you're riding down, you can be riding above a sea of clouds, which is very special. The rock in the distance behind us there is a really cool spot too. It's called Illumination Rock. It's a place where for the summer solstice, they have a big party up there. So if you manage to do this hike on the day of the summer solstice, you're gonna have an amazing time, some incredible views and a really fun ride down. My number nine hike is in Morzine, France. This was from my first ever snowboard trip to Europe. And what was so impressive about Morzine is that it was a short hike up to the peak and it lands you on top of the mountain with some of the best views I've ever seen in my life. If you've ever been to Europe and to the Alps, you know that the Alps just have some of the most incredible mountain peaks. And to top it off, we got to ride down this incredible ridge. I was up with my friend TJ from Board Archive. The final run of the day was this short run through some deep powder, uh, but the background with the views was what really topped it off. My next favorite hike is in Stevens Pass, Washington, USA. Washington, I think, is special for the amount of snow, but also the tree runs. So in Washington State, you get these big evergreen trees and they just get filled up with snow, which is a very unique thing and I think is special for Washington. So this hike goes up into an area called Cowboy Ridge and it's a fairly mellow hike, but it takes you to some of the best tree runs that I've ever done. So as you're cruising down, you have these trees filled with snow. We managed to find, I think, some of the best tree lines of the entire season on this hike. And Washington is also kind of known for having heavier snow, but we got super lucky this day. We got deep, light snow through these incredible trees and Stevens Pass is a spot I can't wait to get back to. My next favorite hike is another place in Washington, this time at Crystal Mountain. And at Crystal Mountain, from the top of chair six, you hike across Campbell Basin. And this takes you to some of the steepest lines that I've ever ridden from a hike, which I was really surprised by because in Washington, you typically don't think of steep runs, but at Crystal, they had some really steep chutes, some big open bowls, and some incredible views, especially of Mount Rainier in the background there. But this hike was super fun. It was a bit windy at times, but it was worth it for the type of terrain it brought you to, especially to some of these really steep shoots, which are some of the most fun shoots I've ever ridden. The number six hike on my list goes to Revelstoke, BC, Canada. And for this hike, it takes you to the top of Mount Mackenzie. And this is probably the steepest hike on the list. So about a 40 minute uh, hike up, uh, taking you to a very small mountain peak, which is pretty unique. Normally when you get to the top of a mountain, it's a big open area, but here at Mount Mackenzie, it was a really small point, which was very unique and a little bit scary. But up in Revelstoke, you've got one of the biggest mountains, a really steep mountain for riding down. So as we rode down, really long runs doing a number on your legs, but absolutely love this hike. I think I did this hike four or five times on this trip. And each time we rode down finding different routes and terrain to ride through. So Revelstoke BC, one of the most difficult and steepest mountains, but a hike that is uh, definitely worth it. All right, we're going into the top five. 
to one of my home mountains of Blackcomb in Whistler, BC, Canada. And this hike in Blackcomb, you go from the Blackcomb Glacier and up to an area called Body Bag. So Body Bag is actually not as scary as it sounds. It's a fairly mellow run. I would say like a blue pitch, but lots of terrain to ride, usually good snow. Uh, the one obstacle you want to watch out for down this run is all the exposed rocks. So there's some rocks to watch out for on the left and right, and sometimes right down the center. Uh, but if you get it on a deep powder day, you have some of the best turns. The special thing about doing hikes in Whistler is that you really feel like you're immersed in the mountains. Because of the elevation and how big the mountain range is, you really feel like you're up there, you're in it, which can make for some incredible riding, but also makes you wanna take extra caution. So when doing any hikes up in the Whistler backcountry, I really recommend coming in with all that avalanche experience. My number four favorite hike is in Hapo One Hakuba, Japan. This was from my first ever trip to Japan. And the draw for Japan is that it just gets such light and deep snow. On this trip, it didn't disappoint. We managed to do some pretty mellow hikes that took us to some of the deepest and most incredible snowboarding terrain. As you guys can see, the views were spectacular. But what was really special is the ride down, you were just riding down through some of the deepest snow, through these really interesting Japanese trees and some natural half pipe bowls as well. So incredible runs, uh, a place where you definitely want to respect the avalanche danger as well. So checking the morning report and riding with all of your avi gear was important. But Japan, really special place, short hike to get out there and definitely some of the deepest and best turns of my life. Kicking off the top three, we're going down to Chile. Caralco is a volcano near the town of Malacoeo. This volcano was super special. Our first day arriving in Chile, we were told that the mountain was very windy, which made it hard to hike, and that it was very icy as you got towards the top. But luckily we managed to find a day where there was almost no wind and enough snow to kind of bury any of that ice on the hike. So the hike up was pretty mellow. And when we got to the top, we had this absolutely insane sunset. You could actually ride into the crater of the volcano if you had more time. And then the ride down was just spectacular. It was deep snow, sunset in the background, and definitely one of the best days I've ever had snowboarding. My number two favorite place for hikes is at Mount Baker in Washington. So Washington is coming up a lot on this list, I think because of the terrain and the trees and the amount of snow. But at Mount Baker, you hike across this ridge called the Arm and it takes you to just some of the most incredible terrain, I think, in the world. So you have this deep snow and Mount Baker has kind of got the reputation for having deep and wet snow because of the warmer temperatures. But this past winter, we got lots of cold and light days at Mount Baker and I was just absolutely blown away by how deep the snow was and how good the terrain is. For me, I think Mount Baker has the best terrain, natural half pipes, rolls, just everything you want for snowboarding. And then to top it off too, just the views at Mount Baker are incredible. And the hike across the arm is challenging, but it's definitely a hike you can do like multiple times a day. So I absolutely loved Mount Baker and a place I'm gonna go back to every season. For my number one snowboard hike, we're going back to Japan, this time to Mount Yote in Hokkaido. Uh, Mount Yote, a really special place, one of the most difficult hikes, probably the most difficult hike on this list. And the purpose normally of a trip to Japan is just to ride the resort and ride deep powder. But we decided on this trip that if we had a sunny day, we would attempt to summit Mount Yote. I had tried this the year before and only made it about three quarters of the way up. So this time I was really determined to get to the summit. Got to the top just as the sun was setting. It was absolutely incredible up there. If you do have more time, you can actually ride into the crater of the volcano. 
Uh, but on this day, I didn't have any extra time, so just rode down, had some incredible turns through some deep and light snow, and even linked up with a fellow Japanese snowboarder who showed me some really cool routes down. Overall, an incredible day in Japan, and honestly, one of the best days of my life. All right, so those are my top 10 snowboard hikes. It'd be great to hear from you guys in the comments if you have any hikes that you would recommend. I'll also put links in the description to some avalanche courses. If you're ever venturing into the backcountry, the best place to start is with an avalanche course. It's gonna teach you the fundamentals to stay safe out there. I'll also put a few links to some of my favorite gear for backcountry riding, so check that out in the description as well. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and have fun out there snowboarding.